when we studied impedances associated with the um, sinusoidal steady state, we saw that the impedance of an inductor, call it Z sub L, was equal to J omega times L. So for a given frequency and a given size of inductor L, we were able to calculate the impedance of the inductor. We're now moving into an area where instead of talking about how this impedance will respond for a given frequency, we're going to look at how the impedance responds as a function of frequency. To do this, it makes sense to look at the impedance of the, in, of the inductor in its polar form, where the magnitude of the impedance would be omega L and the angle would be a positive 90 degrees. So what we see with this is that the magnitude of the impedance of the inductor is a function of omega. As omega gets larger, the impedance gets larger. For omega equaling zero, the magnitude of the impedance is zero. And we understand that. A frequency of zero is basically DC. And we know at DC, an inductor is just a short circuit. It's just a piece of wire. So if we graph now the magnitude of the impedance, or the magnitude of Z sub L, as a function of frequency, we see that it's a linear with a slope of omega radians per second. Similarly, the impedance of a capacitor, Z sub C, was equal to 1 over J omega C. And again, when we were talking about steady state, we had a single frequency source that was driving the circuit, and so we calculated the impedance for that given frequency. But once again, we're now going to start talking about the impedance as a function of frequency where frequency is going to be a variable, not interested just in some frequency, at some specific frequency, but interested in the characteristic of the impedance over the entire range of frequencies. Once again, it makes sense to talk about it in terms of the magnitude of the impedance. So the magnet, or in polar form, where we have the magnitude of this would be 1 over omega c, and the angle here would be a minus 90 degrees. So what we see in the, for the impedance of the capacitor, there's an inverse relationship, an inverse dependency on frequency. When frequency is zero at DC, we effectively have an infinite impedance. And that's our understanding. At DC, the capacitor is, or appears to be a an open circuit. On the other hand, as omega gets larger and larger, as omega tends to infinity, then this capacitor starts to look like a short circuit. Again, we can graph the magnitude of the impedance as a function of frequency, magnitude of Z sub C, and it dies off as 1 over omega. As omega approaches zero, the magnitude of the impedance goes to infinity. As the frequency approaches infinity, the magnitude of the impedance goes to zero. The relationship between the frequency dependencies of these two impedances is truly a remarkable characteristic of them. In the impedance, in the inductor, the impedance gets bigger as frequency increases whereas the capacitor does just exactly the opposite. As frequency gets bigger, the impedance gets smaller. We're going to use these characteristics to help us design different filters, high-pass and low-pass filters, band-pass filters. will all take advantage of these frequency dependencies and the inverse relationship between them.